Kalimera, everyone. I hope you had your lunch and you're ready for a new portion of knowledge today. Whew, thanks for joining me today here at World Camp Europe 2023. I cannot express with words how excited I am to be here and also how nervous I am to be here because it's my first time speaking at World Camp Europe. So cheer up a bit to lower the pressure. <laughs> Much appreciated. Thank you so much. Well, oh, maybe we should start the presentation from the first slide, if possible. Ah, let me just quickly go backwards. Sorry about that. It's a spoiler alert, so keep your eyes closed. <laughs> don't watch, don't watch. We'll go through each of the slides. All right. So today I want to share with you how we can elevate WordPress in order to have truly customized and tailor-made websites. And before we start, I would like to share a few words about myself. I promise I'm not going to bore you. So I built my first website, WordPress website, back in 2016, and it was about the dental studio I was visiting back then. And I was thinking, all right, these people are providing tremendous service, and somehow I wanted to showcase it in a web experience that is going to attract, of course, new clients and so on and so forth. And because of my lack of experience with WordPress back then, I've used Prebuild Team, and it served its purpose. The website came out and it was fine. And what has changed since then till now, I'm going to review in the next slides. Uh, during the years, I've established my own web agency, but um, what excites me the most and what makes my heart sing is sharing knowledge. And this is why we are here today, too. I've created an initiative called DevBondi, which is all about sharing knowledge and uh, opening the doors to web development and more specifically, WordPress websites development. I have two personalities as well. <laughs> Um, I started as a front-end developer back in 2013-14, but uh, it took me no more than like four years to realize that what stands under the hood also fascinates me. So I basically rolled up my sleeves and dived deeper into the back-end world development. And working in the web industry and having the privilege to work in this industry, uh, give me the opportunity to have uh, first-hand experience on how technology impacts our daily life. So you might wonder what we're going to talk about today, right? Well, you see, in our digital era, websites have become cornerstones for brands and businesses. And the demand for tailor-made experiences has skyrocketed pretty much. So, in order to accomplish this purpose and to provide clients and brands with unique websites, we need to dig deeper and to work with technologies and strategies which can separate our product, or their product eventually, from cookie cutter designs and overloaded themes. And, of course, let's first identify the problem. Well, how many of you have experienced some sort of deja vu while scrolling the internet and seeing pretty much the same screens. Raise a hand, right? So many of you. <laughs> well, of course, um, there are a lot of techniques that can't be just dismissed, uh, but there is always a way to provide spice of uniqueness and just just uh, something that will make your website remarkable and memorizable for all the visitors that have been on it. And instead of just talking, I've gathered some examples for you. And you might be surprised to find out that more of 30% of all WordPress websites have been built on top of five or let's say six WordPress teams. Of course, these teams have a wide range of elements and uh, different patterns and layouts. But still, as you can see, we have pretty much a header, 
standard header, we have this big, bright background images. Most often they might be videos as well. Then we have some eye-catching title and of course call to action because we want our visitors and our uh, users to take some action on our website. And you might wonder how this might be a problem or issue. Well, let's take a moment to shift our perspective from client's point of view. For clients, their digital presence is not about just having a website, a simple website with their domain and some basic information and so on. Their digital presence represents their values and uh, their unique identity. And often this abundance leads them to, let's say, issues uh, when it comes to pre-built teams that it might overload them with so many functionalities that, that they actually do not need, or with functionalities that different teams do not offer. On the other hand, we, as developers, we want to improve our skills to have our stack filled with different technologies and libraries, such as React, such as Vue, such as WebGL. How many of you heard of WebGL? Oh, wow, that's perfect, thank you. Uh, great. So you know, uh, when building a WordPress website, combining it with WebGL or um, promoting this to the client might be like, what, what do you mean? It, it is just a WordPress website? Uh, so anyways, if we can make any conclusion here is that clients want to have their website unique, but most importantly, they also want it to be easy to maintain, to add new content, to extend uh, its content and so on and so forth. Developers want to work with new technologies and to improve th themselves constantly. Well, as every problem out there, this one has a solution too. And WordPress actually can be the solution. How? Well, in the next part of our talk, actually, I would like to introduce you to some technologies, different libraries, and uh, different approaches that can enable you to break free from these uh, repetitive designs and these repetitive functionalities. And by saying that, I would like to start with the front end. Well, by definition, front end is combining three main aspects motion interaction, and user interface. And by motion, what we understand by motion is um, having the sense of touching something or, or to see uh, how the elements come into the page or how they flew through the page or what it happens when you reload the page, right? Then by interaction, uh, we can say that it's like uh, when a visitor clicks on a button, what would happen? Uh, is the button is going to change its background or to shrink or to expand? Or when the user submits a form, let's say, for example, what would happen then? Is it going to redirect them to thank you page? Is it going to stay and uh, asynchronously reload the page? What will happen? And last but not least is user interface. And when we are talking about user interface, uh, we are taking all the fonts, all the colors, all, even the tone of voice of the website is going to be more like friendly or it's going to be more like corporative and all the images as well. So combining these three aspects, we can have really customized and tailor-made experience for the brand or for the clan or even for ourselves if we are building like a portfolio website, for example. So, we as humans like to sense the reality through our senses. Well, I, what do I mean by that? Well, we like to touch things, right? We like to smell things. We like to feel the comfort. And we like to see beautiful things in front of us. So, the first thing a visitor see when uh, opening your website is how does it look, what typography does it have, what colors does it have, and so on and so forth. 
And speaking of typography, I would like to start with two yet super simple but super powerful tools. And those are colors and typography. Well, actually, I'm going to show you an example here. As you can see here in this example, we have big, bright titles on top of provocative and contrasting background. And what creates this? An emotion. And once the emotion is created, it leads to engagement. And that's the main goal of our website, no matter what the content is, right? We want users to feel engaged and to come back onto our website. The next thing I want to point out, and actually I have a question for you. In one sentence, can somebody tell me what is storytelling? One sentence. Any volunteers? Okay, I'll show you a quick example. Yeah? Oh, huh. how to reverse it. <laughs> yes. Communicating value. Yes. Ah, yes, you're absolutely right. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> I just me get back to my example here. So, in this, it's a website actually. In this website, you can see the history of cinematography in just about a few scrolls. You can see first it was black and white, then they added colors. Then we have uh, even more special effects like on the Matrix. Uh, we have different uh, variations of television and so on and so forth. And all of these centuries of cinematography have been represented by few scrolls. And if we have to make any conclusion here, that would be like, in our age, we're overwhelmed of information. You know, we are scrolling constantly through different fields of social media, website, and so on. So the power of scrollytelling it's a new terminology in web development and it's here to stay. I've often seen so many websites adopting this approach. And even me as a developer, sometimes the only way I'm able to represent a story is by using scrolly telling. So the visitor needs to understand what the purpose of this website is and what the content of this website is in just about two, three scrolls quickly. Just leave them with impression uh, give them something that will engage them and uh, last but not least, make them come back. The third aspect I want to talk with you is fluidity. Well, nowadays websites are all about fluidity. You know, this animation that flows from right, from flows from left, from top, from up, from everywhere. So it's the way how you are opening a new screen after another screen and you are serving the content that is on the website. And I have chosen an example for you here as well. You can see how we are guiding users attention through the titles, through the images. Of course, it's a speed up one, uh, one but still you get the impression. And now almost my favorite part, almost how we can take these ideas, let's, let's call them ideas, and implement them into an actual code, into an actual front-end, which is going to do all of these things if we choose to, do, cho choose to use them. Well, here I have prepared a quick video for you, and I would really ask you to pay attention on it because it consists of, I think, four websites each one of who is built on top of WordPress. So these are WordPress websites, and yet they are super creative. And here you can see the example with the big, bold titles. Of course, it's not necessary to use this. We're not designers anyways, but uh, just as an example, how using typography and colors can actually make the difference, and you can memorize that website. videos are also here to stay and it's a fabulous way to quickly introduce the content of the website super quickly 
and to leave the user with lasting impression that they uh, find out more information about the website super quickly again. All right. And you might actually start to wonder what are these technologies that we're talking about so much and how we can use them. I'm going to review in just a few seconds. And actually, before I um, share with you these uh, libraries, let's call them libraries because they, they are actually libraries. If somebody wants to share a library after that or even during the talk or in the QI session, please be my guest. So. Let's move forward and see these technologies that we can use to enhance and to level up our WordPress website. Well, one of my favorite here is Barba.js. Maybe this is why I put it on top. It's a JavaScript library which allows us to go through pages uh, without reloading actually the page, which makes first uh, transitions between pages much more faster and it makes less HTTP requests, which again leads to faster user experience. Also combined with other libraries can lead to super interactive um, screen openings. The next one is WebGL, which I already know that you're super familiar with it. It's a JavaScript API, which allows us, the developers, to create 2D and even 3D interactions I'm pretty sure even for those who are not super familiar, you have seen it into, let's say, Google Maps is using WebGL to, to create this uh, um, canvas. Uh, another library I would like to mention is 3JS, which is, uh, again, JavaScript library using WebGL to perform different types of interactions. Just up by Greensock is actually my favorite, uh, and I often use it to create small interactions and also interactions that are, that are engaged with scrolling. So imagine uh, as we talked a few minutes earlier about scrolling, when user scrolls and scrolls, you can review different elements and you can hide them beautifully. So you can create really a whole spectacle using it. Last but not least, it's Lenny Scroll, which is, of course, there are many libraries like Locomotive Scroll, and you can find out more, or you, you can suggest also, uh, which are making the scrolling experience smooth and nice, so you are not interrupted by shifting screens all the time, but you have this smooth experience. All right. And now, since we have this beautifully packed up front end with all the functionalities, with all the libraries that we have incorporated mindfully. <laughs> it's time to bring this piece of art into a WordPress. Well, how to do that? I'm going to start by talking a little bit about creating custom WordPress team, which leads me to another question. How many of you have created fully custom WordPress team from scratch? That's great. <laughs> I love to, to know my audience a bit better. Well, you may know, and for those of you who don't, who don't know, that um, in order to work properly, a WordPress team needs two essential files. And those are style.css and index.php. But since we are going to create a custom-made and tailor-made uh, WordPress team that is going to serve to the front end that we have already created, we're going to need a bit more, much uh, more files in here. Of course, the, we have header.php, footer.php, uh, which are going to be uh, multiplied and used throughout the website. But first, before we def, uh, dive into the coding part, we need to do one thing, and that thing is to make ourselves super clear about the content structure. What do I mean by that? Well, actually, I'm going to tell you a story of my own experience. Before a couple of months, I was working on a project which was about, it was a website built for uh, America's biggest payment providing ec providers expert. And 
we have the front end all packed up. We have all these beautiful interactions, animations, and each page was unique in its own way. So we have truly achieved this goal to provide the visitors of this website with remarkable experience. So me and the team, we have decided that since it's going to be truly unique page, each page is going to be truly unique, we're going to use page templates, right? And we have almost built up everything. And we were like, I don't know, maybe two weeks before launch date. And client calls us and says, okay, but we want to be able to tweak around the sections to move one in, you know, on top of the other or to completely erase any of the sections. And you might wonder, well, WordPress can actually do that. It's all about tweaking and connecting and playing with blocks. But since we're creating a truly customized team here, we are relying on the user experience and uh, on the order that each one of the sections appears in order to provide really uh, engaging storytelling. Anyways, we have started from scratch and we've built it. I'm going to mention how and what we did in a few minutes. Uh, but first, I'd like to start with custom post types. I assume that lots of you are familiar with custom post types in here. Yes, raise a hand. All right. So for those of you who don't know, custom post type, well, actually, I'll, I'll use an example. WooCommerce's products can be called custom post type. It's a way of organizing content and creating its own um, way to, to be rich, like posts, like pages, like products in WooCommerce, and so on. So using custom post type can custom post types can really elevate the content managing when it comes to because when you hand over the projects, the client needs to, to know how to edit all of this content. Um, to give you an example, a friend of mine, which is a cooking blogger, uh, wanted a website, and I was like, of course, we're going to build a website for you. So we built the website, and it was all about recipes, because cooking blogger. Well, I've created a custom post type called recipes, and I labeled it with several custom taxonomies which complements really well custom post types in order to organize again the content and to make it easier to, to filter it afterwards. So for example, in her book, uh, she had a page called recipes and she has a filter inside of it and visitors uh, were able to filter through dish type, through time for preparation, which is important. Uh, also by uh, uh, needed ingredients and so on and so forth, you, you get the idea here that uh, once you have set um, yourself clear about the content and you know what WordPress elements you're going to use in order to combine all of this front end, then you can start actually building it. And to go even a step further, I would like to mention a few words about Gutenberg. Well, again, with this audience, I'm pretty sure that you are familiar with Gutenberg since it's since uh, version 5, correct me if I'm wrong, is the default WordPress editor. Well, of course, in, it, in WordPress core, you can see a lot of pre-built Gutenberg blocks. But if we want to relate to this topic or how we can create customized experience, well, we can actually grab each one of website sections and turn it into a Gutenberg block. And it, it was exactly what we did for this company. I've told you that in the last minute they said, oh, but we want to swipe sections or to erase them or to add two, um, two equal sections on top of another and so on and so forth. So by creating custom Gutenberg's block, you can implement your front end or your front end sections in a way that could be like Lego or like puzzle for the clients to uh, pick the pieces together. And of course, as almost everything in programming, uh, Gutenberg's block can be created in several different ways. I'm not going to fall into the technical details because we don't have that much time. But if anyone is interested on how we can create a custom Gutenberg's block, feel free to catch up with me after the talk. 
And since we have knowledge on how to create custom post type and uh, whether we are going to use custom taxonomies that are going to complement this uh, and or extend this custom post type, we already know that we might use Gutenberg box and to implement our beautifully created front end into the Gutenberg box. It's time to create page templates and single, fi single files. Well, single files, each custom post type has its dedicated single template, which is responsible for the layout of this custom post type. To make it clear, let's imagine that you have a standard WordPress theme and you have your blog posts. But then you add a new custom post type and the layout for this custom post type, let's call it projects, for example, it's pretty much the same as the block posts, but you don't want this. You want inside of your um, custom post type for projects to showcase your recent work, to add some screenshots, to add some videos. And these are elements that are not represent into the normal block posts. Well, in this way, uh, you can create single PHP file that is going to be dedicated only for the project custom post type. And if you have wondered um, how with all of these libraries and uh, heavy front end, uh, we can still have pretty much faster uh, page experience. Well, not only by using Gutenberg, but I'm gonna give you this as a quick example. Well, Gutenberg, uh, if you decide to have custom box, um, all the scripts and all the styles for this custom block is going to be loaded only if the block is present on the page. So no matter if you have like library of 100 blocks and if on a several uh, or a certain, on a certain, sorry, page, you have three blocks, well, you're gonna load the scripts and the styles only for those three blocks. And of course, Yes, because speed matters and you don't have all of this crazy HTML markup that pretty much uh, maybe each of the uh, team builders um, wrote on a page. And by this, I want to wrap it up super quickly and to actually tell you that um, creating uniqueness and creativity can be done by WordPress. And the only thing that uh, can stop you might be your imagination or your skills, but skills are something that you can gain anytime. So dedicate time if you want to have a bit more creative and tailor-made experience. So thank you so much for listening. <laughs> All right, everyone, thank you. Um, thank you, Pete, yeah. So we have um, <coughs> the questions and answers section, and if you have any questions, please raise up your hand. Okay, I'm counting one. Who has the mic, please? Okay, um, someone is gonna get the mic to you to ask your questions. Please, we are gonna be taking one question. Uh, this, is the, this is the first person. Okay, we're going to be taking one question per person, please. You can always catch up with me after talk after the talk. <laughs> Is it on? Yeah. Okay. Um, I have a quick question. How does any of this work with accessibility? Like, if a person has accessibility issues, mm -hmm. how do they use like the long scroll telling site that yes. you need to scroll? You need to be able to see it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for the question. It's a really important question because we need to make sure that web is accessible for everyone, right? Uh, when we are building the front end of our websites, we can use best practices like adding data attributes so we can ensure that screen readers know, knows exactly where the user is. So it could be buttons, it could be sections, or it could, it could be titles on the anchors, so user knows exactly where they are and what they are going to open if they click on this. So it could be implemented directly into our front end. And it's, uh, to say that way, it's in the front end garden to, to, to be done before starting with the team. I hope that answers your question. Okay, next person, please. Just give it. 
Hi, thank Hi. you for your talk. Uh, I'm assuming that you're presenting some kind of design to the client before you start, actually start building. Yes. How do you design or how do you present moving designs to the client? What workflow do you use for that? Yes, thank you for your question. It's also a really good one. Well, you know, with these modern technologies, like even, for example, using Figma, you can present interactions or you can use Adobe's products as well to make a quick preview on how is it going to look at the very end. Of course, not every client and not every website is suitable for huge animations. Uh, you, you need to talk this with the client as well and you need to see which is their target audience at first. And this is the most important thing. And then it's all about testing, showing and communicating. Thank you so much for the question. All right. Next person, please. Uh, hello, and first of all, sorry if you mentioned this and I didn't catch up, but uh, what you mentioned building custom blocks on Gutenberg, and my question is, uh, all your front-end applications run in a React app, or do you also create custom blocks that render PHP and you use uh, mm -hmm. the PHP to show the front-end while the blocks are created in, in the React Native uh, WordPress? Yes, it's also a very good question. And as I mentioned, there are always more than one way to do so. Uh, the question is uh, speaking itself. So again, it depends on the project scope and on the technologies we would like to involve into this project. It could be done by native React blocks using uh, native Gutenberg blocks using React. And you, we can start building up the front end according to the blocks that we are going to render at the very end. But it also, and it happened uh, in my experience as well, to receive already built front end that it's not meant to be uh, sliced into Gutenberg box. So that way I use the second approach that you have mentioned. And you can do this by using, for example, advanced custom fields even. It's also an option to create box with advanced custom fields. So again, depends on the scope and depends on uh, if you're starting from scratch, from the discovery phase, or if you're receiving some really, really um, beautifully assembled front end and you need to quickly decide what you're, uh, how you're going to implement it into WordPress. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, Any, anybody else? Okay, hello? I think we have... Um... Hello? Okay. Uh, hi, hello. Hi. Um, is this design approach uh, effective on smaller screens as well, or is it more targeted on larger screens? Also a very good question. Well, again, it depends on the target audience, but of course the, we are trying, and I believe it's the best to try to keep as much as you can, but again, keeping in mind that too many animations and interactions can be really overwhelming into a smaller screen. So even, uh, it could be a way to just complement the desktop website with smaller interactions. And, or even I have seen, and even in my experience, I, I have uh, built such solutions. If the animation or, in the, or the interaction is too complicated, you just guide the user even to rotate the screen, either to open it on a desktop. It really depends again on the project and what the client or the person you are building this project wants to achieve with it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next. Hello. Okay. Hello. Um, do you have a recommendation for a tool that designer can use to present animation to developer? So like developer can look animation, see the timing, easing, and everything else that we developers need to write in CSS <laughs> and we cannot guess. It, it, yes. Uh, this, thank you. It, thank you too. <laughs> Uh, you just described uh, a day of my life, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I believe it's a pain in the, you know, <laughs> when talking with a designer talking with the developer or developer talking with the designer because um, in my experience designers, uh, when they see the final implementation of their ideas, they were like, 
But I was not imagining, imagining it like this. What did you do? And I'm like, okay, but you haven't shown me any examples or you haven't shown me anything. So to answer properly your question, uh, maybe it's, it's a way of communication and it's a way of combining different tools such as Figma, as I mentioned before. I'm not a designer, uh, but I'm pretty sure that there are many much more um, tools that designers can use in order to provide information as clear as it possible. Because um, even, even using uh, reference websites, even this is an option to, to say if the designer has seen something and imagines it uh, in a certain way on our website, it's an option to just show you the uh, reference website and you can communicate over the idea and how it's going to be implemented. There is no magic tool. No, <laughs> I'm sorry to disappoint Thank you, you but <laughs> okay. unfortunately. Next person. Okay. Hi. Hi. I work for a big publisher. We have mainly big news websites who need to be very scannable and I would say they are all pretty boring. <laughs> have you ever uh, found something that can uh, make a website scannable, uh, yet make it creative. Because I find it very hard mm -hmm. to make creative news websites where everything is just a card, maybe with a background or a carousel. Mm -hmm. All right, get your question. Well, remember when I spoke about colors and typography? These are really simple tools. They're not overloaded with uh, huge interactions. But you can really make a difference and you can guide readers' attentions for headings, different uh, font sizes. You can use different colors also to engage. You can make it even uh, a bit further with let's say, small easings and small trans transitions each time when the user opens up a new page, a new a news they want to read. Um, but Tweak, tweak with the details. If you don't have the scene for astonishing interactions, tweak with the details because it's in the details. Thank you. Thank you, too. Any more questions? Okay, we have one. Ah. Thank you very much for the talk. Thank you, too. Um, I have a question about um, uh, focus. Uh, if you um, if things uh, move, you were talking about animation and mm -hmm. transitions, and uh, we all know if something moves, the people look to the things you, uh, that move. So um, what do you do with clients that see, oh, we, now we can uh, animate things, mm -hmm. and they want to animate or transition mm -hmm. things that shouldn't get the focus because mm -hmm. it's not the content, uh, but some fancy images or yes. things like that. So they are, the, the, the user is looking at the wrong things because mm -hmm. they do not uh, uh, should look at beautiful pictures. They should um, see and read the content. Yes, indeed. Well, again, it's uh, more like um, when the designer and the client are talking about the final result they want to achieve and on which elements they want to focus users' attention on. Because, of course, we can overdo it with lots of animations and interactions that, only are going, uh, that are going only to overwhelm the user and will make them exit the website. But when used right, interactions can navigate users' attention and to make them like focus on the things they, uh, we want them to focus on. For example, like if you open, let's say, some e-commerce website, you see how the Add to Cart button is in different color, is in different size. It might use even different typography just to stand out, just to be different. And of course, for an e-commerce website, that's the main goal. We want visitors to become clients, to purchase something and to finalize their order. So it's about um, getting clear idea on what is the main result that we want to achieve when a visitor opens up the website. I hope that answers your question. All right, thank you. Um, that's the last question we can take. Our time is almost up. Um, if you have other questions later, you could reach out to the speaker and be around. Um, ask her directly. I'm sure you have a more uh, engaging conversation uh, that time. All right. Thank you everyone for being here. Thank and you round too. of applause for the speaker, please.
Thank you.